Have you ever noticed how sometimes like a really big development happens, but it kind of gets, I don't know, overshadowed by other stuff? Yeah, absolutely. It's like the news cycle moves so fast these days that it's easy to miss things. Exactly. And I think that might be what's happening right now with this new thing from Google, Gemini 2.0 Flash. Ah, yes. Gemini 2.0 Flash. Specifically, its ability to generate images, like right inside the AI itself. Right, natively. Yeah. So today we're going to deep dive into this and figure out what makes this so noteworthy and what it could mean you know, for everyone, not just the techie folks. Definitely. It's definitely one of those things that seems like a small tweak, but it has potentially massive implications. Absolutely. So first things first, for our listeners who might not be super familiar with this, we got to explain what this whole native image generation thing actually means. Right. I think it's helpful to contrast it with how things used to be. Like if you think about older versions of Gemini with Imogen or even ChatGPT using DLE3. They always use separate systems, right? Yeah. Exactly. You had a language model trying to understand what you wanted, and then it would hand that off to a completely different model to actually generate the image. Yeah, like two different departments that didn't talk to each other very well. Yeah. Yeah. And in that handoff, there was always a risk of losing some of the nuance or the detail. Right, right. It's like trying to explain a complicated concept through two different translators. Something's bound to get lost along the way. Exactly. And this native image generation thing just completely bypasses that. It's all happening under one roof in one system. And that's a game changer because it's not just about things maybe being faster, yeah. but also about how accurately that image reflects what you actually asked for. And potentially even unlocking new capabilities that weren't possible before. Okay, so how about this, this experimental model that Google has, Gemini 2.0, Flash X, it's available for free right now. Yeah, you can play around with it in Google AI Studio and developers can access it through the Gemini API. That's how they can build it into their apps and services. So cool. Like literally our listeners can go and see this in action for themselves. Absolutely. And that leads to the next question. What can this integrated approach do that's so noteworthy? Google themselves have highlighted a few key enhancements. Okay, let's get into it. So first up, text and image storytelling. What do we mean by that? Well, imagine developers being able to create entire illustrated stories, you know, like children's books or graphic novels. Oh, wow. Yeah. Where the characters and the settings stay completely consistent from beginning to end. That's huge. And here's where it gets really cool. The AI can even take your feedback and use it to tweak the story or completely change the art style. Wait, so you can tell it, hey... I want this character to be a little more grumpy or I want this scene to look more like a watercolor painting and it'll just do it. Exactly. And it'll do it in a flash, pun intended. Yeah. The level of control and iteration that this offers is potentially revolutionary for anyone creating visual content. Mind blowing. Okay, next up, we have conversational image editing. Ah, yes. This is one of my favorites. This sounds like it's straight out of science fiction. It really does. Imagine having a back and forth conversation with the AI. Okay. And using everyday language, you can refine an image step by step. So like you could say, make the sky a little bit bluer or move that tree a little bit to the left and it would understand and make those changes. Exactly. It's all about that real time collaboration, that constant exploration. Like you're working with a partner who just happens to be an AI. Exactly. And this completely shifts the way we think about creating images. It's yeah. no longer about coming up with that one perfect prompt from the get-go. It's about that iterative process, right? Yeah, like molding clay. You can experiment and refine and just see where it takes you. Wow. Okay, now, this next one is where I think things get really smart. Gemini 2.0 Flash supposedly uses like a broader understanding of the world to generate images that are more, I don't know, contextually relevant. Right. It's not just about matching keywords. It's about understanding the underlying concepts. Right. And Google gave a really cool example of this with illustrating recipes. Oh, right. Instead of just getting a generic looking stew. You could get a visually accurate representation of a specific type of Thai curry with the correct ingredients and everything. Exactly. It's all about that deeper understanding of the world that the AI has access to now that it's all integrated. Okay. And now for a more practical problem that I think a lot of our listeners can relate to. Have you ever played around with these AI image generators? Oh, yeah, definitely. And, you know, one of the biggest headaches is often just text. Oh, uh, yes. The that often comes out garbled or misspelled or just plain wrong. Right. Like it can be readable, but it just doesn't look quite right. Exactly. 
And Google is claiming that Gemini 2.0 Flash is actually way better at making text look good within images. Like visually appealing and also accurate. Which is huge EE for creating things like ads or social media graphics or even just invitations. Yeah, anything where you need that clear, readable uh, text. Right. So it sounds like Google is really trying to address some of the real world limitations that have been holding these AI image generators back. Exactly. And if they've succeeded, it could really open up a whole new range of possibilities. And the cool thing is, it's not just Google saying this. Like, there's already a lot of buzz online from people who've actually tried it out. Right. It's still early days, but the initial reactions have been really positive. For example, Paul Kuvert, he focuses on AI and tech education. Mm -hmm. He pointed out that you can basically edit any image using natural language. Even ones that you upload yourself. Yeah. Think about that for a second. You can take a photo from your vacation and then just tell the AI, make the sunset more dramatic, or add a flock of birds flying overhead. It really blurs the lines between creating something new and just editing what already exists. It's wild. And then we've seen examples from users like at Apollinario and at Forfra X who took simple headshots and completely transform them. Like they added props, changed where the person was looking, even generated full body images from just the headshot. Yeah, it's amazing how much it can extrapolate from just a little bit of information. And it's not just about realistic images either. Robert Riachi, who's a researcher at Google DeepMind, showed off how it can generate consistent pixel art. Yeah, which means that if you have a specific art style in mind, you can actually tell the AI to stick to it. That's really impressive. Okay, and then Logan Kilpatrick, who has a background with OpenAI and is now with Google AI Studio, he highlighted the chat-based image editing with this interactive story featuring, get this, a 3D baby goat. It just sounds really fun and engaging. Yeah, and it shows the potential for creating these really interactive, dynamic experiences. Absolutely. It's not just about generating static images anymore. It's about creating whole new worlds. Okay, here's a key observation from Testing Catalog News on X. They pointed out that Google is the first major lab to actually deploy this native multimodal capability. So they're kind of leading the pack right now in this area. Yeah, which is interesting because other labs have talked about it. But Google is the first to actually put it in the hands of users. It speaks to their commitment to pushing this technology forward and making it accessible. For sure. And a lot of people are commenting on the speed and accuracy. Like, user Angel showed how quickly and accurately she could add chocolate drizzle to croissants just by asking. Yeah, it's those little details that really make a difference in terms of practicality and efficiency. Right. And then, theoretically, Media on X highlighted something else that's really cool, this idea of incremental editing. Oh, right. Instead of having to regenerate the entire image every time you want to make a change. You can just tell it to adjust specific elements. Mm -hmm. They showed how you could ask it to, like, raise a character's arm, and the rest of the image would stay exactly the same. Which is huge in terms of saving time and resources. Exactly. And then Bilawal Sidhu, who used to work at Google, showed off how it can even colorize black and white images. Wow, that's interesting. Yeah. Think about the possibilities for historical restoration or just adding a new dimension to old photos. It really shows the versatility of the model. Now, of course, no technology is perfect. Like, in my own testing, I did notice a limitation with the aspect ratio. Oh, really? Um, what was that? It seemed to be stuck at 1.1, which could be frustrating if you're trying to create something for a specific format. Yeah, that makes sense. But on the flip side, it could change the direction that characters were facing incredibly quickly. That's promising. Right. So there are definitely still kinks to work out, but the potential is clearly there. Yeah, it's important to remember that this is still an experimental model, so those early limitations are to be expected. Exactly and they provide valuable feedback for further development. Absolutely. Now, beyond the cool features and the technical stuff, it's important to think about what this means on a larger scale. Yes. Like, what does this mean for developers, for businesses, for, you know, the future of how we work and create? That's where things get really interesting. Imagine AI-powered design and marketing at scale. Businesses could use this to create branded content, ads, social media visuals, all in a much more cost-effective way. And because it's so good at text rendering, it could also revolutionize packaging design or any kind of marketing material where you need text to be prominent. 
Right. And then for developers, think about the potential for building AI design assistants. Right. They could help with UI UX mockups, create documentation with real time illustrations, even power those dynamic storytelling platforms we were talking about earlier. It's like having an AI co pilot for your creative process. Yeah. And that could free up so much time and energy for people to focus on the higher level aspects of their work. Absolutely. And then we could even see new kinds of AI driven productivity software. Like, imagine automated presentation generation, where the AI creates the slides and the visuals, or legal documents that are annotated with AI-generated infographics to make them easier to understand. Or even dynamic e-commerce product mockups that adjust in real time based on customer preferences. The possibilities are really endless. It's almost overwhelming to think about. And here's a bit of industry context for our listeners. Remember, OpenAI's GPT-40. They actually previewed similar capabilities, like native image generation, back in May 2024. Yeah, that was a big announcement at the time. But they haven't publicly released it yet. Mm -hmm. So in a way, Google has kind of taken the lead here in deploying this kind of multimodal AI. In fact, one user on X at ChatGPT21 even commented that OpenAI has lost the year plus lead. It's interesting to see how these companies are leapfrogging each other in terms of development. Yeah, the AI landscape is definitely moving at lightning speed. And it's only going to get faster from here. So let's bring it all together for our listeners. What's the key takeaway here? I think it's that Gemini 2.0 Flash's native image generation is a huge EE step forward. A significant leap in terms of both the technology itself and the potential applications. It's offering improved accuracy, opening up all these new creative avenues, and has really practical applications for businesses, developers, and just everyday people who want to explore their creativity. It really has the potential to change the way we think about and interact with visual content. Absolutely. And remember, this is an experimental model, which means you can try it out right now for free. Yes, head over to Google AI Studio or check out the Gemini API if you're a developer. Play around with it. See what you can create and form your own opinions. It's all about exploring and experimenting to see what this technology can do. Exactly. And, you know, just to leave our listeners with a final thought, a little something to chew on. Yeah, what should they be thinking about? Think about how this seamless integration of text and image generation within a single AI mm -hmm could change, like fundamentally change the way we create, communicate, and even learn in the future. It's not just about making pretty pictures. It's about a whole new way of interacting with information. That's a really good point. It's not just a tool. It's a potential paradigm shift. And who knows what incredible things people will come up with as they start to really explore its possibilities. So that's something to ponder. Absolutely. I think we're just scratching the surface of what's possible with this technology. I agree. And it's going to be fascinating to see where it takes us. I can't wait to see what people create. Me too. Thanks for joining me on this deep dive. Until next time, keep exploring. Definitely. And always keep learning.